with that point, we'll go back to the drawing board and do some calibration. But what fueled our growth was the mining sector. And all of us are aware that um, for the last few years, Sierra Leone has been recognized to be one of the fastest growing economies. Our growth rate for this year was just for 11.2%. We are doing well. And our macroeconomic fundamentals were also strong. We had a new program with the IMF. And in December of last year, we met all structural and quantitative benchmarks. When I was appointed Minister of Finance in December, we had equal interest rate on domestic securities, for example, for the 91 days, was 19%. Then we decided to go for a zero borrowing policy. It yielded dividends. Today, domestic interest rates range between 1% and 2% only. So the fundamentals are there. We're doing, we are doing well on growth, on energy, on tourism, on agriculture. And FDI flows was also good. We are able to attract major companies. We have silver, we have softies, we have gold trees. All of them. And recently we had the Radisson. So we felt that we had reached a point where there was a need to review our strategy to begin to think about bringing forward our middle income country state of academia. But it didn't work. Then came Ebola. So where are we today? Ebola has made me uh, begin to appreciate and understand that fragility is self-reinforcing. Because if we had had the right infrastructure, the right institution, and the right human capacity to be able to confront Ebola, we wouldn't have suffered as we have right now. So GDP growth rate as we anticipated was 11.3. We did our initial assessment. We came to realize, well, maybe it could be around 7%. Unfortunately, clear cut reality show that that is impossible. So it's now hovers around 3 to 4%, and it could be worse. Unfortunately, London Mining, one of the major iron ore companies, is about to go down. So that has further exacerbated the situation. Manufacturing is bad. Sierra Leone Greenway Limited, for example, is set to lose 24,000 jobs and will affect 600 farmers that are producing sorghum. Cocoa and coffee, which happens to account for 90% of cargo exports, is also in the bottom now. Why? Because people have abandoned their farm. Everybody running away. Construction is also is bad because many of the contractors have abandoned their sites, both for roads and other construction activities. They are all going down. Tourism, our initial assessment was that tourism was at, dropped at about 30%. We were wrong. It's now between 50 and 60%. Air travels, all of us know, is about to stagnate and strangulate the hopes of regions. We've been isolated whether that is a global best practice or strategy, someone has to advise us, but it's really still in our ground. And so we seem to be isolated. And I call it by default or design, it's really an economic embargo, whether we like it or not, but that is the reality of it. And so 